It's now time to answer a question that's been gnawing at my bones since I very first started doing these pumpkins. I want to know, is it possible to carve one of those fancy pumpkin faces into the thing and have it look halfway decent when you finally get the project done? So I have this completely round sample here that I have made with the garbage bag, but I did not make any of the ties in it, didn't make any ridges or bumps. I want this as smooth and pumpkin-like as possible. I'm going to see if I can put my all-time favorite carved pattern into it. God help me, here we go. Okay, not too terrible of a rendition. Um, personally, <laughs> I'm a little worried about a couple of parts. we got to remember the strengths and limitations of this medium. The strength is the stuff's pretty sturdy. The weakness is, just like a normal pumpkin, it's going to have some flimsy spots, particularly in any area, in this flame pattern here, where it's going to get absolutely weak and brittle. Now we can make up for a lot of that with paper clay because it's so resilient we can put it anywhere we want it. But there's going to be a lot of very small parts. And we also got to remember too, there's going to be some dulling around the edges if we want to put paper clay around them. They're not going to be as sharp, they're not going to be as crisp. So we might have to do a few other tricks possibly with some of that brown paper to get this really looking great. So. Here's hoping. I'm going to cut this out, and uh, I have high expectations, high hopes, and it's going to be fun no matter what. So here we go. Just like with any fine cut pumpkin, you want to cut out the small parts first. Another problem you face with doing this that I foresee already is that we do not have the depth of a pumpkin here. We don't have the inch or so of internal structure that a proper pumpkin will give us. We've got about an eighth to a, of a, to a quarter of an inch of mache layering. And that is it. So a lot of these things might become incredibly brittle. Maybe not brittle, but um, flaccid. But any kind of moisture is applied to them, i.e. the paper clay layer. I think the rule of the day is have a very, very sharp X-Acto blade. Take it slow. And don't be too terribly risky with what you do. The plus side, that six layers really lays a lot flat, flatter when you're not doing the ridging. Yeah, that's awful bendy right there. That might be problematic. There's problems already with the structure folding in and out on the small cuts and detailed areas. Uh, if you ever try this on your own, I would say get a very, very, very sharp blade, brand new, to minimize that effect. And just like a fancy pumpkin carve, I'm keeping the big pieces in until I am ready to pull them out.
Well, one thing I do know, the stuffing will be coming out of this one much earlier than I normally take it out for one of my standard pumpkins. I can just tell the amount of detail work that's going to be required to hold this design together. going to be made easier without the fluff in the middle getting in my way. This was something that's also going to require quite a bit of drying time, I imagine. Do a little bit of work, let it dry. Do a little bit more, let it dry. Maybe a whole lot of don't screw around with a fancy card with this level of detail. It's possible that even a few pieces of wire hot glued in behind the design might help hold it all together. Either way, this is an interesting challenge. A moment of truth, but it's a moment of let's see how this handles. There's a break right there. <laughs> In retrospect, I realize there's certain aspects that are actually better than pumpkin carving. So any breaks and faults, I can just hot glue back together. There are going to be a few. Let's be a snark and take the stuffing out right now. There we have it. Not too terribly bad. Feels a little light, but that's because it hasn't gotten its coating yet. Uh, I am slightly worried about that, yes. So I'm going to coat it very, very slowly and very, very carefully with paper clay. And I might do some of the reinforcement right from the inside just to start with. Got some fluff in here that I would just as soon have out. Doesn't make a mess all over the floor. <laughs> yeah, like I should be worried about a mess at this point. Okay. Cool. Here we go. Fancy pumpkin carving. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, it can be done. Uh, problem area. There is a break here, and there should not be, and there is a break completely through. But fortunately, I can just hot glue this and get it completely reset. I will probably end up going on the inside, reinforcing some areas with a little bit of wire behind it so they stay nice and permanent. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna kill the camera now and ponder, plot, and maybe do a little bit of reinforcing. No, wait. I'm not going to kill the camera now. I've got the paper clay right here. I'm going to use up whatever is left of this container. So I'm just going to put a reinforcing layer. Honestly, 
I'm going to put a few reinforcing bands on the inside. That way when I do the outside, if for any reason there's any kind of sag or sink because the paper is absorbing moisture, the inner reinforcing bands should prevent that. Because again, I normally don't pull the stuffing out this early. And perhaps I shouldn't have, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. If anyone has wondered why I'm playing Hug a Pumpkin here, it's so I can see what the hell I'm doing through the opening. Alright, so hopefully you can see I've taken a line up the spine there, and there are a few more on either side. I'm not going to bother showing the other one. That's just to give the inside a little bit of reinforcement. Well, there's a start. This thing is going to be a very interesting build. That's this tub of paper plate done, so I'm going to take a break, and you guys will probably see me again after a black screen. So until then. <laughs>